Hi, I'm Mike Shaheen with HHO Connection. This is the third video in a short series geared towards people who are just getting into HHO and want to learn some of the basics. The topic today is going to be neutral plates. This is probably the number one question that I get asked is what the heck are neutral plates and why do I need them? Um, it's actually very simple. Uh, I've, I've come up with what I think is a nice little demonstration so to help you visualize what happens when you start adding neutral plates. In a nutshell though, it's all about the electrolysis process um, in that if you take two pieces of stainless steel and you dip them in, into an electrolyte, so you got two pieces of metal like that, you put 12 volts between them, that's great, you're going to get a lot of gas, but the problem is anything over let's say 2.2 volts is wasted. Um, you start getting, you start noticing bubbles around 1.8 volts, optimum is somewhere around 2 volts, eh, 2.2 you're hitting about the limit. Anything over that 2.2 volts and it's basically just wasted. Um, it's wasted energy and it's going to create a lot of heat. That's why that you see when you see cells out there that don't have neutral plates, they're just running, especially the ones who just run either two wires or two plates, they heat up really fast and within no time you're not even generating HHO, you're just generating a lot of steam. So let me show you in real simple terms what neutral plates are all about and why you need them. So here we go, let's say this is our generator and we have two plates and we're going to send that a 12 volt source. So now what we've got is one big plate gap here with 12 volts in the middle of it. Now let's say we add one plate in the middle of here but we don't connect it to anything. This is our neutral plate. We're going to stack that right in the middle. So now, instead of having one big plate gap, we've got two, one and two. And if you were to take a voltmeter to this, what's happening now, let's say this is your positive and this is your negative, as the current goes through here, it has to pass through this plate now, which is going to lower the voltage. And if you were to take a meter, let's say these were all perfectly spaced, and if I were to take a meter between this plate and the other outside plate, it would read 12 volts still. But if I were to take a meter between this plate and the middle plate now, because I've got two plate gaps, it's only going to read 6 volts. Because we have a 12 volt source divided by two plate gaps, which gives us 6 volts. So any, if I read between this plate and this plate, it's going to read 6 volts. If I read between this plate and this plate, it's going to be 6 volts. Every time we drop another plate in between, it's going to make another gap. And so we have to take our 12 volts and we have to divide that by another number. So if we keep on adding these plates like this, these are my neutral plates going in, let's do a seven plate configuration, which is really common. Okay, I'm going to put one more plate in there. Okay. So now, you've got seven total plates. You've got a positive on one side, and you've got a negative on the other side, and you've got five neutrals, one, two, three, four, five, in between here. So now it has to pass through a total of six plate gaps. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that means now you take your 12 volts, you divide that by six plate gaps now, and that's going to give you exactly two volts per plate gap, which is perfect. If I were to take a meter and meter, but again, between the two outside plates, it's going to read 12 volts. But if I go between any other two plates that are next to each other, let's say I take a reading between this plate and this plate, it's going to be 2 volts. And as long as your spacing is consistent, that's why we use uh, the, the 1 16th inch gaskets and try to keep everything as flat as possible because the more consistency that you have in the, between all your plates, the more consistent your voltage is going to be between any two plates. And that is neutral plates. I'm going to put some probes from a voltmeter to the dry cell and take a reading on the different plates that are next to each other so you can visualize what I was talking about. Now if I, if I put the probe on the first two plates, you'll see it reads just about exactly 2 volts. And in theory, as I move across those plates, I should add 2 volts for every plate as I go across. So now I'm going to move the probe over one more plate, and you'll see it reads 4 volts. Move it again, there's 6 volts one more time. There's 8 volts, one more time, 10 volts, and the last plate in one series, there's 12 volts. So that's basically one stack, a positive and a negative with five neutral plates in between, giving you a total of six plate gaps and two volts between plates. Now if I take the reading between any two plates that are side by side in here, 
you'll see it's almost exactly two volts. Hope it makes sense. As you can see, the concept of neutral plates really isn't all that complicated. It's all about lowering the voltages between your plate gaps to down below 2.2 volts. Now, if in, a, in a perfect world, if you had a 2-volt power supply, you wouldn't even need any neutral plates. But not many of us are working with a 2-volt power supply, so you need neutral plates. If you're going to be putting this thing in a car and you're dealing with 13.5 volts, you should probably consider running 6 neutral plates to try to get those, those voltages down. Um, you can run 5, but it will have a tendency to overheat uh, a little bit over time if you're running 5 neutrals. Um, other than that, one thing to consider is as you add the neutral plates, you're going to have to add a little bit more electrolyte. It's, gonna, it's not going to draw as many amps as you start adding those neutral plates in there. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind that you might have to, to beef up your electrolyte solution a little bit as you start adding those neutral plates. Anyway, I hope you learned something. Take care. Be safe. We'll talk to you soon.